going to welcome on stage now Alexandre Mars, who is uh, uh, who is also a serial entrepreneur. Uh, please and please applaud. <laughs> And, and yes, we're doing it a bit differently since we, we're going to have a sort of interview with, uh, with Alexandre. So, <clears throat> Alexandre, you have been, uh, so you too have started, uh, um, started your career as an entrepreneur very early. I think you were 17 at the very beginning. And uh, you have uh, created Scroon, that is a, a um, mobile messaging uh, yes, technology sir. that you sold to BlackBerry. And then uh, you were the, the creator, the founder of Phone Valley, the mobile marketing agency that you sold to Publicis. And, uh, and now you've taken out something completely different. You've created a new form of charity that uh, aims to bring the charity business to the 21st century or to the digital age. I don't know what you prefer. Um, so the, the idea, if I understood it well, is to uh, give donors new tools to better select the actions and the associations they want to contribute to and also to better monitor and uh, experience the impact they're going to have, right? Through data, videos, all the digital tools that you, you, you have uh, uh, at your disposal. So, uh, so uh, there has been quite uh, a trend around philanthropy uh, lately. Uh, we all heard about the Giving Pledge, for example, and specifically about uh, from this, uh, this billionaire from the new technologies and internet and all that. Uh, but there is one exception to this, uh, <laughs> to this uh, movement, and that is Jeff Bezos. <laughs> he, has been, uh, uh, he has been nicknamed as the new Scrooge by uh, the, the Huff Post because he, he doesn't give that much uh, as compared to his fortune. Uh, but the reason why he doesn't is that he thinks it's too complicated to give money in the right way. So my question, my first question would be how would you convince Jeff uh, to, to give money to the Epic Foundation? Yeah, so thank you. Thank you first for having me here. Um, talking about the, um, uh, the timing, you know, when you start something, I think is a lot of people here are entrepreneurs who want to build their own startups. It's always about product and that's what Alex said. Um, it's all about team, and that's what Augustin said, but it's also about timing. Timing is everything. Just you can build something pretty good in terms of product. Everything I've built before was okay, just was not the best product ever. I had such a good team every time, but after timing was perfect. When I started just my first um, agency, the internet was, you know, it was a very, very, very startup. It was 97. But in 99, then suddenly everything was, when, you know, was mad and was crazy. When I sold just um, Fun Valley to publicists, it was a week, a few weeks, it was even a week before the sub subprime crisis. Um, and when I sold it to BlackBerry, my last startup, it was a few weeks before, you know, and, and the, that the full, the, the, the full management team of BlackBerry has, you know, been just um, fired. So talking about timing, timing is everything here. Um, and, and back to your question, I want to interact with the room, even if I know we only have a few minutes now because we're late, thank you guys. Um, uh, but I want to ask you two questions. The first one is, um, have you given money or time to a social cause last year? Can you just raise your hand if you just time money? So I, I think almost everyone, right? If someone is not raising his hand, I will be really pissed. Um, the second question is interesting. How many of you believe that you have given enough? So can you raise your hand the people who really believe you have given enough money or time. And that's exactly what I've you know, experienced with my wife when we travel the world. We have seen that it's even with, you know, because most of you, I say all of you, because most of you are alumni, are good people, big hearts, but you don't give enough. And back to your question about Bezos, it's true with everyone. So when I moved here four, five years ago um, with my wife and my kids, don't, don't, don't cry, my wife, because you know, she was working for Emmanuel Chan, so she was, it was the you know, best time of her life, and I, I told her we would move to New York, and how hard it is to move to New York. For her, it was pretty hard because she, was, she had to leave a uh, wonderful Emmanuel. Um, but still, when we moved back here, when we moved here, I knew that my next startup would be a social one. Um, and I started just uh, doing my market research. Every time you start something, you need to start your, some, your market research. So I started meeting a lot of people. So I started with the Gates and the Gates Foundation and the OMDR network, people with real knowledge and amazing people. And I told them, I know zilch, I know nothing about philanthropy, 
but I know that will be my next big thing. So I need to spend time with you if you have time for me, and you need to just give me just the ropes. Um, and they, they did it. So they introduced me to other people and so on and so forth. So I spent three years, I was here running businesses, but when, during my spare time I was meeting NGOs, philanthropists, or policymakers. And at the end I realized this, I realized that it's so hard to give that a very few people you know, give enough. And I started asking people the question, why, why you don't give more? What is holding you back to give more? Always the same answers. One, we don't trust. The truth is we don't trust entrepreneurs, but even we, we trust even less social entrepreneurs. Two, barely we don't have the time. So we work like dogs every one year, and barely we don't have enough time to really do the work. And three, we don't have the knowledge. We are a wonderful banker or journalist, but you know, social good is a different world. Uh, so at the end, December 15 in France, when you need to write your check to uh, charities, you always you know, skip one zero, even two zeros, and you always give to your school, that's wonderful, for the foundation HCC here. You will give to stuff that you know they will do good work because you know them well. Uh, so you will give to the church, to the synagogue, but beside this, you will go beyond. So that's what we are trying to change. To, to change this, we are trying to adapt and to build the tools that you need to, do, to make decisions. The first one is selection tool. So like a venture capitalist for philanthropists, we, we care about youth, that's where our passion um, is. So it's, all but, you know, it's, it's everyone between zero and 25 years old in six regions around the world. And how we do this, like a venture capitalist, we partner with uh, amazing organizations around the world. And we are asking them to share with us every year the top organizations. So last year, we received 1,400 applications from NGOs and social enterprises in those regions. And we spent six months, like a VC, to get to those 1,400 and to put them in our uh, model to just get at the very end 20 organizations. That 45 data points, six months of work, uh, nine weeks where we have to travel and to visit the 50 finalists. And at the end we have 20. Like a, like a VC is 1%-ish of the, of the applications at the very beginning. So after we can go after everyone and say, guys, if you care about youth, if you want to give more, if you want to educate your kids to show them that you know, your money can have an impact, you can, you can be sure that the organizations we are selecting are just amazing. That's the first tool. The second tool is a tracking tool. Everything we do, and first with you know, a, a private bankers or with the banks, is we know exactly where the, our money is. We know just know the difference between yesterday and today. We know if we are just richer, wealthier at the end of the day than the beginning of the day. Um, why not with philanthropy? Why not we should know that your, the impact of your money? If I'm giving a million or if I'm giving $10, I want you to know the impact of my money. In the world of philanthropy, now it's doable. Why? Because of technology. Why? Because even in the worst place on earth, you can have your dumb phone, not your smartphone, but your dumb phone, and you can track you know, the impact of your donation. So that's what we do. We have those platforms that you have beautifully just built, so UX, UI. Um, as beautiful as you are, you, you have to book your next vacation trip or your next, just buying your next beautiful car. The same way, you can have access to this. You can see the impact of your donation. It's really just modern. It's 2016. Why? Because it's non-profit. It should be shitty. Why? Because it's, why? Because it's non-profit. It should be old school. It has to be as beautiful and as well just you know, built not in any for-profit business. And the third is about the experience. The experience is uh, we push donors to visits. It could be 10 blocks from here, a shelter where you have kids. Uh, we, have no, we, have, we, have, we have we have no place to, 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 uh, to sleep. Or it could be in Brazil or in India. The goal is to go and to visit organizations. So what we do is pretty clear here. We build and we adapt the tools that we all use every single day to the nonprofit world. But everything we do is free, and I should mention this, because we don't take any cut, any commission. Everything we do is purely just now free. So we are covering with, again, I'm talking a lot about my wife because she's here. Um, but we're covering with my wife the cost of, of everything. We're a team of 20 people. And the goal is to have having something very pure where we don't take just commission. So you don't see us here to make more money. We made enough money in the past running those businesses. Now the goal is really to just having seen something very pure that if you want to do more, join us. Um, do the work with us because we need to do something. And for us, it's through this, you know, through this tool. Thanks. So when are you meeting Jeff to tell him all that? Um, that's a good question. I think is the issue we have with with people like Bezos, he is doing stuff, but, and that's a good, that's a good segue. When you, and I'm sure most of you are doing a lot of things. 
but you don't communicate on this. And as you know, um, we are communicating a ton about what we do. Um, we're using media a lot um, because we believe it's important for people to, to see that um, it's, it's normal. It should be normal to do more. Um, and when you do good, please um, mention this to your friends, to your families, uh, because then people will follow you. You need to be, and that's barely what we, um, what we have learned at HEC. We are leaders. We uh, this kind of, you know, hopefully, in just inside us. So we need to pave the way. We need to lead the way. And that's what we, we think. Um, some people like Bezos, but we have a lot of people in France, you know, wealthy families in France. They are doing a lot of things, but it's not in their culture to communicate. So it's always, they're always telling me, we're not doing this to get some you know, great press coverage or meta coverage. Still, if, we're, if they're done doing this, people, the base of their pyramid, they will keep thinking that they don't do good, they don't care about them, and then just you have this kind of you know, uh, segmentation in the pyramid. So HEC, and I know my friend Augustine is from ESCP, so you know, uh, no luck. But you know, the thing is, you have this kind of you know, part of the population in the same year, and this part of the population, if, when they do good, they should communicate because the base uh, will never understand this if, if, or if we're not telling it very clearly that we care and we believe the civil society means us individually, but also us as CEO of BNP Paribas US and, and I read all the names, the great names from beautiful corporations coming tonight. We all need to do more because it's our role um, to give um, as a corporation and the corporate world should do way more and that's what we say and that's the big theme that we are Pushing hard, and you know the theme. Just so. Yeah, uh, doing well by doing good. That's right. good. Um, so that's it. Doing well by doing good. When we're talking about this new generation, and I think Peter, for you, it's very interesting. You know this. The kids, uh, we're at HEC now. The, those kids are so different than where we were. Um, at the time, I remember this. The first question we were asking when we went to interview was um, the job description. The second question was. Um, the compensation. The third question was really the size of the office, or if we were the office was facing the street or you know, the backyard. The kids, now the kids, the students, um, they're different. First and second question are always the same. Third question is, who is your profit? What are you doing? And that's an interesting question because I can tell you that in the next five to ten years, those students will never go working for BNP Paribas or for anyone else here if you don't have this social good at the very core of who you are. Um, and that's not just a uh, pure production. I can tell you it's coming, it's happening. If you go to Stanford in, in California, if you go to NYU, Columbia, that's happening. Those kids are so different. We call them the millennials, that those kids who are just spending their nights on Giphy's and a website. And, and that's, those kids are so different. They care about the world in a different way. And they will never work for organizations if those organizations are not just doing good at the core of who they are. So it's not, it's not only just giving something, it's really having this social good at the core of who they are. And that's something interesting. So that's, that's for us the next big, no, um, big wave. And be careful if you don't understand this. I can tell you, you will be the next Nokia, but not for the same reason. So you will, be, you, you will disappear in this, in this market in the next 10 years. And again, I think it will be a good thing. If you don't put social good at the core of who you are, you're in trouble. That's something to meditate on. Um, Okay, so if I understood you well, you are introducing new tools and also new concepts into charity. And um, in your opinion, to, to what extent can we use reasonably uh, concepts like uh, return on investment or marketing or digital transformation, concepts from entrepreneurship uh, into uh, um, charity? Isn't there a cultural gap somehow? Yeah, so it, I think you, you add this cultural gap in the past. I think this is... Um, this has to stop because for sure if if I'm so for example if um, Alex is coming to see me and if he's asking me to invest in this wonderful startup I would ask him you know basic questions about you know is numbers and could be just growth and everything so I would have everything with me then I will have I will be able to decide if I'm putting my money uh, why should be different with a nonprofit uh, why you shouldn't ask be able to ask okay what's your growth what do you vision where do you want to go to be in five or ten years I can see this um, and it's interesting because when we are receiving all those applications from NGOs and social enterprises, some of them have, you know, have no real balance sheet. Or, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that people sometimes believe that just because they are doing good, uh, people will trust them. Um, so what we are seeing here is 
everything we are doing, and that's why we are running it as a business, because it is a business. Uh, let's be very clear, just know it's for sure, it's, we have a social impact, we don't have any financial impact, but still a business. We need to just to change in a mindset, we need to just change the way people think. And when Augustin said before that Michel Augustin is a media, Epic is a media as well. Um, we're using it as a media, we, um, as Michel, I, I'm, I'm Augustin, Michel Augustin, I love this because a French guy saying we'll, we'll rule the world in the next 10 years. No, you're very American now, it's, it's great, just now. Um, that's already just, it's great, just not only the US, but you want to go to Asia everywhere. But we think the same way, just that we believe just uh, we, should, uh, we should go big. Um, and because, because the world is, is in need, so that's what we do. Thank you. We have time for two or three questions, so. Uh, hello. Um, you hear a lot of entrepreneurs make the argument, why bother going to a business school? The best way to learn how to, to be an entrepreneur is to do it. What would you, having gone through Asha Say, what would you say your advantages from going to Asha Say were, you know, over <laughs> just starting to be an entrepreneur from day one? Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think a fair, it's a, it's a fair question. I think, I think I joined HSC because of my wife. Um, so I think I maybe don't have the, uh, don't have the perfect answer. We were Kodush over there. Um, so it's true. It's a true story. So, um, but it's, it's some, you know, most of the time I, I even didn't know the, uh, the business school, um, or the school of the people I'm, I'm recruiting. So for me is, is interesting that's, um, I think you understand this after, I think after a few years, I've been maybe 10 to 20 years, that was important and it was part of you, who you are and also you alumni just network. I remember just when I was, my second startup, my third startup, um, I used the, you know, the, um, um, how do you call this, yeah, the, um, the book, the um, alumni just, um, book, um, no, the alumni, just, yeah, directory. Um, and I remember because I had no connection, zero connection. I was trying just, again, ponytail, beard. Um, I was trying to sell the internet um, in France. So it was pretty hard when you had the mini tail at the time. Um, and then it was very useful to have my directory because I was calling people in pretty you know, big shots, saying, okay, I'm from the same school, give me, give me a minute. Um, it's different in the US because in the US, you don't need the directory, usually because it's, it's, a, it's a world of entrepreneurship people will take the meeting, and you know this here. In France, it was different. So without this, um, it would have been way more difficult. So again, I think in, in France, it's so different from here. I think in France, um, schools um, and that kind of school are so important to really be successful. As an entrepreneur, I started this uh, when I was 17, so it was, you know, I didn't need this. Um, um, but that's a different story. And going back to the world of um, the charity business or the philanthropy, one of the critical things, I guess, in the lack of trust of people in, in what some charities do is the opaque level of admin internal costs. So you give 100, they keep 40, and in fact only 60, and I'm maybe over-exaggerating it. So when you screened your 14, 1,400 applicants and you went, went down to 30 to 40, how much did you take that into account, which is the, whatever you call it, the leverage ratio or, you know, the, the, the transmission ratio or the lack of friction, rather, in your, in your, in your assessment? Yeah, so um, we had just, um, we had 45 data points. So in one of them was really this ratio between what they will just spend and what they will just keep or what they will just put in, 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 into their programs. So it was one out of 45, uh, 44 other you know, data points, but it was an important one for sure. Um, that's a very good point. That's why we want to have something pure where we take zero, so it's then totally transparent. So if you choose one organization in Uganda or in New York and Paris, you know that 100% of what you give go there. Just a small comment for HEC Foundation. It's a 10% uh, operating cost on it's the It's a good ratio. Raised. <laughs> Thank you for your support, Philippe. It's good to know because since I'm f funding the foundation, I'd, yes. I'd like to, I'm glad it's to know. It's a good ratio. <laughs> A last question for Alexander. Yeah. Yes. Hi. So you mentioned that you don't uh, take any management fees, but it's not just, in my opinion, about giving money. It's also about making sure that the companies that you give to are properly managed. So how do you ensure that? So the way we do this is in the selection process. Um, we, uh, uh, 
the, uh, the fact that we work with, so 100 organizations, so we partner with other organizations, the, the Gates Foundation, the Ashoka, the Dazra, the Gifei, um, around the world. So we, what we ask them every year is to share with us their top you know, five, 10 organizations in those countries. And then after we spend another six months of vetting what they've been already vetted. So it's like just now if you were just now in a VC and you, if you were spending just now your time to vet what has been already vetted by just now the best VCs around the world. So you can be sure that at the end, for sure, I'm not saying that everything will be perfect, but we're trying to just uh, minimize the likelihood of you no know, failure just in, in, at, some, at some point. But it's, uh, that's why we, management is everything. Just, uh, you know, it's, it's, so the three main criteria, so you didn't ask, but talking, talking about the 45 data points, one is management um, and the quality of the management. The second one is the organization by itself. And the third one is the social impact. So I think that's it. Yes, thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you.